Game live continues. I'm Marenzi kicking it with the raging redhead Cam Stewart in the combat uh, zone. Tomorrow we have no Sal. Sal's gone. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah, Sal's gone. Yeah, we got Joey. I don't know. Yeah, does Mick Ozzy do? Uh, does Mick Ozzy do anything but football? Uh, oh, game of the Oilers uh, are playing. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what we're yeah, going to get. Do. <laughs> we're going to get mixed NHL six pack. Uh, exactly. <laughs> 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 Nah, That's Mick, great. Mick will be off for a couple of weeks. We'll bring Mick back. We're actually only two weeks away now, I think, from the uh, the start of the um, the AFL. Aussie Rules? Australia. Nice, Aussie nice. Rules Football League uh, starts in a couple of weeks uh, again. Welcome to MickAussie.tv, my international sports and sports comedy show. We just heard Gabe Renzi and Cam Stewart talking about AFL 2021 season. So I'll again be on Gabe's show. This will be the sixth season that we've talked AFL picks, best bets, and all sorts of international Aussie rules, football, SANFL, country football, everything with Gabe Renzi. So I'm looking forward to that again. We've actually been talking AFL since 2003 but regularly for the last five years. So it's a lot of fun. I look forward to it. Starting March 18th is the 2021 AFL season. Now you can see I'm wearing my uh, South Gore Lions jersey, Guernsey. Well, this one was given to me by Bobby Bilney, because as you'll see in this little segment from about year 2000, I was on City TV with Anne Roma, the host wearing my Aussie Rules football gear. It was the day before I went on the big hit show, TSN Off The Record, also wearing my uh, South Gawler Lions jersey. I wore it at many Grey Cups as well, so I don't know where the original one is now. It had a lot of wear and tear and a lot of partying. So let's now go to Anne Roma interviewing me on City TV. She was seriously checking out my legs and my shorts. Have a look. It's awesome. Trying to figure out NFL and CFL football in North America. Please welcome Mick Aussie. <laughs> hey, buddy. Good to see you right there. How are you? Good, thanks. Yeah, now, you great. are an Australian rules football player, and you're trying to figure out how in the heck we play football here in North America. What do you think so far? Oh, it's way different. I mean, as you can see, I, this is how we play. We go out with just our shorts and our jersey and... No helmets, no padding, nothing, you know. Could your shorts be any shorter? Uh, they're pretty tight, yeah. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun on City TV in Toronto with Ann Roma. There you go on the background. The 1992 South Gore Lions flag. We won it, and that's the great picture as we're running through the banner. Fantastic stuff. Now let's go to last year. AFL Round 7 in the 2020 season. I'm at the Duck Lake in Edmonton, and I'm on Game Time Decisions on Sports Grid that used to be Fantasy Sports Network TV. They're based out of New York. Cam is in Toronto, and the host, Gabriel Rents, is now in Vancouver because of COVID. He had to move out of New York. So check this out. It was a lot of fun, and we're also talking about the Edmonton football team Formerly the Edmonton Eskimos, and it was the last week that I was allowed to officially call them the Edmonton Eskimos in the CFL. A lot of fun. You know, let's get to some AFL action right now. Mick Ossie uh, joins us. What's going on, Mick? Hey, guys. Soon we won't be able to say Edmonton Eskimos. So uh, as of this week, I'll give you the finger and say, go the Eskimos, eh? But no more soon, mate. Yeah, I would say that it would be like you'd be heartbroken. You're also wearing a BC Lion jersey Lions. too, so it's not like you're like some. Don't talk to me about tradition or anything. Like really, man. That was amazing. You're not you're even an Eskimo wearing, fan. You're also wearing a BC yeah. Lion jersey. <laughs> Gabe, you know that I'm BC Lions number one, but you know I like Edmonton as well. I've been here five and a half years. It's a cool city. It's home for me now. But yes. Maybe they'd made the right decision because it's never going to stop. There's going to be people complain. So Eskimos no more. I hope they're not going to come down and hunt me here with, by saying Eskimos. 
I wouldn't mind seeing you get hunted by an Eskimo right now, to be honest. But that's that's besides that's besides the point. All right, uh, Mick. Uh, this guy's got more props than Carrot Top. So what's the deal now, Mick? Are you just officially homeless and you live out there now? Like you just live in that swamp? Like uh, that? This is the deal? Like I thought you just did it once. Is it like I think he lives there, Cam? Like he's camping out there or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> like it's like we get hey, it, Mick. Right? Hey, yeah, hey, if you yeah, can yeah, survive, yeah, like, Survivor Edmonton. Yeah, I, I know. Like it. See, I, I can talk. It, I can talk to the ducks, Gabe. I can talk to myself. I can meditate. Because as you know, the world's getting stupider. And I'd rather talk to the ducks and the animals and half the people in this world right now. All right. That's fair enough. That, that, that's 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 yeah. fair enough. All right. So, all right. So we got uh, Carlton and Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide yeah. minus 210. The Carlton Blues uh, are the underdog here. Mick, what's your take? Oh, my God. The power pat smears. They're sitting on top of the ladder. And my team, the other Adelaide team, is sitting on the bottom. Oh, I like the power, Pat Smears, to continue that one. The Blues had a good win last week, so be careful. It's at the Gabra, so no team has the home advantage. Take the power, Pat Smears, to keep going, but be careful. Blues can can shock, but the power, I hate to say it, mate, they might go all the way this year. They're looking really good, and they've enjoyed the hub life up there in Queensland. They've united well together. Take the power, Pap Smears, but could be an upset. That's great. They have Australian hubs too, Cam. <laughs> like they're enjoying the hub. <laughs> the Australian like hub. Queensland. Uh, yeah, it's perfect. I bet you the I bet you the Queensland hub is nicer than the uh, the Orlando hub. It's a big game for West Coast uh, right now. Mm. You know they're three and three. You don't want to be on the wrong side of five hundred. Um, you know the standings are incredibly tight this year, Mick. There's a lot of parity in the league. We're seeing, you know, pandemic sports, guys. This is what happens. We talked about the pop smears doing well, but there's a million teams that are just three and three in this league. That's not good enough for the West Coast Eagles. They're a disgrace, three and three. Um, I think they're going to win this game. They're going to go to four and three. What do you think uh, here, Mick? Yes, mate, they're back home, so it's the battle of the two Perth teams. And take this, USA, there's going to be 30,000-plus in the crowd because Western Australia and South Australia and other parts of Australia have got COVID under control. Ten Melbourne teams, Victoria teams, had to move out. There's a bit of trouble there. 30,000 people in the beautiful Optus Stadium in Perth. Take the Eagles to win that and win that well. Five. The main player for the Dockers, he is out. Take the Eagles, and now they're home for a few weeks, mate. They could make a real good run for it. And uh, finally, we saved the worst for last, Mick, the yeah, Adelaide yeah. Crows. Ah, ah, um, ah, ah, yeah, ah, saves. Crows. <laughs> <laughs> Plus 240 against uh, the St. Kilda Saints. Adelaide okay. getting 17 and a half points, Mick. I wouldn't even take that 17. They're a disgrace. I might go and jump in the lake in a minute because all the Crows players, maybe they should go and jump in the lake, take the Saints to win that and probably cover. Crows are terrible. We are brutal, and I admit it, terrible. Have our top 10 players from last year still, so there's all sorts of trouble (laughs) there. The bosses are getting fired. It's all sorts of trouble. But my multi, take the power and the Eagles at minus 117. Add the Saints, then add the Tigers, and add the Suns if you want as well. And take some unders. You might do well if you bet most of the unders. I like these picks. You know what, Mick? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump in and I'm going to have quite a few picks tonight. I'm going to play the AFL. So we'll recap uh, those picks after. Good stuff, uh, Mick. Stay safe in the swamp. All right, be careful because some of these games are blowouts when the team is only slight favourite. Have a great weekend, guys. Well, that was a lot of fun on Game Time Decisions on Sports Grid New York Station. Now they are on Sirius Satellite Radio, Channel 204. So it's going to be a big season of AFL picks for me on uh, Sports Grid and Sirius Satellite Radio. Edmonton football team, they're going to work out their new name shortly. And here we go. Edmonton Colours is also the Woodville Warriors Colours. 
So let's combine a bit of Woodville Warriors talk and also South Gawler Lions in the Brosser Light and Gawler Football Association. Well, their current coach is Gavin Chaplin and their under-17 coach is Scott Lee. Wow, this brings back memories. Round 11 in 1998. My uh, fourth league game in the SANFL. This was before the Crows came in. So it was a really good. It was the second top league in the country behind the VFL. Well, we went out to Elizabeth Oval. Played a bit of under-19s there, but I was back there for my first league game against Central Districts. I had a star-studded team, including Gilbert Mc. Adam, who I played with at the Darwin Waratahs, and that's currently going on now. The NTFL, the Northern Territory Football League, and the Darwin Waratahs. I follow them on Facebook, see some of their great little videos. They're red and white, so that was a fun year. I played Darwin, Darwin Waratahs. Well, Gilda McAdam ended up being a star after Central Districts for the St Kilda Saints. Greg Smith, the legend from the Sydney Swans, and Collingwood was also playing. They really did have a great team. Well, we got absolutely smashed. I just looked up the score. It's online. 23-14-152, the Central District Bulldogs, to 12-9-81, the Woodville Warriors. I kicked two goals, but oh, i never forget the first first bounce. I'm starting in the forward pocket. I was roving with Kevy Harris. Scott Lee comes up and just like, bang. I'm going, holy Crap, welcome to a, a game against a, a star-studded great team. He's tough, eh? He was a tough, great player, Scott Lee. And then I had to stand Gavin Chaplin, as I said, the now the coach of Gawler South Lions. They come runners-up last year, so he's doing well. He was He's a little fella, but he's a good player, very good player. So, yep, that was a tough day. At Central Districts, Russell Ebert ripped into me because I got a kick and I tried to kick it to someone, but Peter Bubner took a big grab, so I got a drilling from Russell Ebert at oh, a quarter time or three-quarter time, I can't remember. Central Districts, they didn't win the flag that year, but they had a star-studded team. That was a memorable day. We got absolutely smashed. All right, now let's continue my history of AFL on uh, USA and Canada TV. Let's now go to 2016. This is the Fantasy Sports Network, who have now been bought out by Sports Grid. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of my shows are now not on YouTube. I had a chat to the boss, the owner of Sports Grid, Lou. He's not happy because when there was a takeover, but from fantasy to sports grid, something happened. They lost a lot of subscribers on YouTube and also a lot of videos that I was on, the shows are lost. So if you check out my mickozzy.com AFL page, it's a bit of a mess because of these lost videos. Thus now I record all of my shows, but it shouldn't happen again. Sports Grid's doing well, but unfortunately I lost a lot of shows, including twice when I was in studio with Gabe and Renzi in the Toronto there. Fantasy Sports Network, beautiful setup. Let's go now. Renzi Unfiltered. We talk a week after the grand final when the Western Bulldogs, formerly the Footscray Bulldogs, defeated the Sydney Swans in the AFL grand final. We also talk the USA Nationals. We talk the uh, World Footy International Cup with the Canadian ladies. We talk odds of the AFL 2017 season and lots more. So enjoy this from back in 2016. Morency unfiltered on the Fantasy Sports Network in 10 years. All right, as I promised earlier, Mick Aussie was going to uh, check in. No NFL football to break down, uh, but I did uh, want to recap it a little bit and uh, tip, our cap, uh, tip our cap, so to speak, to the uh, the Western Bulldogs. Uh, monster, uh, monster season, big upset getting 10 points in the championship game. They win the game outright. And, of course, Mick Ossie's a, a diehard Denver Bronco a fan as well. Mick, it's always a pleasure. How you doing? 
Yeah, great, mate. And yeah, it was a fantastic game. Those Bulldogs shocked everyone. They're young kids, half of them still have pimples. But great, great stuff, sir. It's a great year, AFL. Yeah, it was unbelievable when I was watching that game, Mick. Uh, the Sydney Swans were all like uh, big, tall, good looking dudes that, you know, probably had hot wives and. You know, the Franklin dudes, you know, got $10 million. <laughs> and the Western Bulldogs were all little guys that looked like Matthew Della Bedova, man. They were all just like little sort of small dudes, yet they were like little little terriers, man. They are like little pit bulls, man. Wherever the ball was, they were. And it seemed like they just wanted it more than Sydney. Sydney seemed like the, the little softer side in that game. Yeah, you could tell from the first 20 seconds of the game, they all went in hard. The the moment didn't overawe them. I didn't like their trendy little haircuts, but, you know, that's my issue. <laughs> I don't like any trendy haircuts except, uh, except a couple. But, yeah, great uh, great game. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, the Ottawa Swans out there lost in the uh, AFL Ontario League last week. So, uh, great year of footy. But it's not over, mate. U.S. Nationals in Saratoga, Florida. On October and 15th and 16th. So a lot of US Aussie footy teams and the Quebec boys are up there as well going down in Division 1. So it's not over yet, mate. Well, so you come with some point spreads and about the US National AFL. And we'll be breaking it down. I tell you, there's already odds for who's going to win the championship next year. And uh, Great Western Sydney are the favorites, plus 400. Western Bulldogs co favorites, plus 400. Sydney Swans, uh, plus 600. Your Adelaide Crows are eight to one and uh you know we've got afl women as well mick and there will be lines for the afl women what's your take on women's afl footy oh mate i think it's fantastic like when i was in australia no women played at all well army a couple like they all played netball and watched those guys play but I think netball's cool a lot of hot chicks <laughs> yeah, our producer yeah. over here probably knows netball because he's a bet three six five guy yeah yeah you, you bet netball before no, no, I bet on the Vixens. That's my team. <laughs> uh, the, the Vixens. I think they're from Melbourne. Melbourne Vixens. So, yeah, anyways, yeah, we got Melbourne. The Melbourne women are actually favored, uh, Mick. They're the best ones, plus 350. Yeah, I think it's fantastic. And the Canada women won the uh, International Cup there a couple of years ago. And that's next year as well. So the women's footy has grown immensely in Australia and worldwide. So it's great, mate. Obviously not as rough as the men's, but still pretty rough. Hope you enjoyed that, Renzi Unfiltered Fantasy Sports Network. Gabe was in the Toronto studios. I was out and about on a Friday afternoon, and then it was showing about two hours after that on TV, cable TV. Yes, a proper TV. So then I would, on Saturday, get my camera out and record it from the TV. So I love technology. And as you'll see in this show, you'll see the evolving technology over the many years I've been doing shows. So that was a lot of fun. And, yes, the Western Bulldogs, whoo, what a great premiership win. They're on the up again. They might, uh, might be pushing top four this year, but we'll talk more about 2021 odds for the premiership later in the show. Now let's go to SBR TV, that sports book review. Gabe's uh, late night show was shown on this uh, this company. I did a deal with them many, many years ago, a advertising deal for some uh, content on mickozzy.com and the guy, the boss I talked to was based out of Montreal. So then I talked for a year or so late night on SBR. And here we are talking round 18 in 2018. So I hope you enjoy this show as well, talking AFL, and then <laughs> the guys loved it. It was a version of uh, Cribs. So I've got a little bit of this show, but I just watched the whole show. It went for like 45 minutes, and the guys in the chat and Gabe loved my uh, exhibition of all my football gear in my house at the end of this show. Short version. Check out the full version on my Twitter and YouTube. At uh, St. Kilda against uh, the top team in the league uh, here at Richmond. Richmond's 12-4 and four in first place in the ladder. 12-4, uh, and four, St. Kilda just 4-11. and 11. Uh, Monster point spread at 32.5 points, Mick. I'm not ready to lay the points here, but I'll put them in a parlay. Richmond's going to win this game, but I don't want to lay 32.5. 
Uh, I would. That started off at 39 and a half. Uh, Baka Julio's out. He was probably best player in the grand final last uh, year. And uh, Nathan Broad's back in. He's the guy that took photographs of a girl topless last year after they won the premiership. He got in the shit, mate. Went on social media. He got suspended for a bit. So he's back in. The Saints smashed the Blues, but they're terrible. But the Tigers lost in Sydney to Greater Western Sydney. So they're going to be angry. Uh, is that Eddie Ad? They play all right there. Tigers a win. I'll take them. I'll take them on the minus if you want to do the double on that as well. I think they'll bounce back and win. Probably win well. Still big game here. Uh, what do you, What do you make of this one here with uh, with Collingwood being thirteen and a half point favorites? Yeah, interesting. One of the games of the week. The Roos got to win. They're out, like you said, their ninth spot. The Magpies are sitting in third spot. The star of the year, the coach, Nathan Buckley, Fig Jam, he now got fired. They're on fire. Forget the spot, Gabe. This is amazing. Mason Cox, our American buddy, was out last week with a sore hammy, and all the reporters are saying they missed him. So Mason Cox is back in, up forward. He's so tall. He's two and a... 211 centimetres. He's played well, mate. Amazing story because you and I have been talking about him for the last year or so. Tough one. Probably stay away, take the Magpies to win and maybe cover. I see that football behind you. Which one? Oh, I've got lots of footballs. CFL. Old Aussie one. Darren Bennett signed this one. All these CFL players signed. That's an old one. That's the new Aussie one. It's not NFL oh. football. You go with all the logos there. Yeah. Christmas present from the girlfriend. I don't know if the bills are on there. Oh, yeah, they'll be on there somewhere. Yeah, of course the bills are there. Tons of that? stuff, mate. This is my bedroom. See, I'm normally at my girlfriend's house. This is my bedroom. Got tons of stuff. Bobblehead, the Allen Pro Bowl. There you go. There's a bobblehead. What else you want? Broncos, Eskimos. It's, it's Sports Rage Cribs. We're doing with well, this a new thing. Here you go, Woodville Warriors, SNFL. My, oh, I love that. Oh, check this out. Don Miller, Sydney Swans. Oh, look at that. Von Miller. There is, there is Von Miller signing my helmet. How cool is that, eh? There you go, check that out. Not bad. What else you got there? Oh, fucking koala bears for the girls. They love them. Like, you want this game? And then you might open your wallet a bit. There you go, brand new Aussie wallet. <laughs> Looks like you got a lot of Denver Bronco stuff there. Oh, yeah. Edmonton uh, Aussie Footy Club beer stubby holder. Uh, oh, this is my room, mate. This is my pad. I'm only here a couple of nights a week, but I live with Dan's a good fella, and yeah, it's good. good. All right, let's go now to some international. AFL, Aussie rules, football, oh, the sport is growing all over the world. Canada, USA, England, Ireland, Europe, all over the place. Well, I'll start with the biggest and my favourite interview ever. When you talk legends, when you grow up, this guy is an absolute AFL, VFL player, legend, coach, legend. Let's go to part of my 8 to 10 minute interview with the legend Kevin Sheedy at the USAFL Nationals in Louisville, Kentucky. I was there playing with the Calgary Kangaroos and obviously I prepared for this interview. He said he'd give me five minutes. I got nearly 10, so I'm very proud. Part of this full interview here. A lot of people know that Kevin Sheedy loves the international growth of Aussie rules. We're up to like 50, 60 teams in the US now. I'm from Calgary, Canada. You are up in Toronto last week watching the grand final. How was that? Well, it was all right until we got drowned in the middle of the uh, game. But um, look, uh, they, uh, well, they played a bigger game. You know. It won't be too bad. It's not other people to me because I'm a huge NFL fan. Uh, sort of known that you came across a few years ago. You've been to America a few times to learn techniques and modern stuff from some of the NFL teams. Tell us a bit about that. Oh, well, I mean, obviously, well, 1974 is the first time I came here. Yeah. Yeah. Came into Louisville and um, obviously the hometown of Muhammad um, Ali. Of course, I've been down to the to his Hall of Fame, which is absolutely sensational. 
Yeah, we'll have to have you the Kentucky Derby. Um, fine. So they're the sorts of things I want to learn because you've got to pick up a, a way, you've got to take as much knowledge in and go back to Oz and share it. And I think that's that's important. So I've been coming in and out of the learning for over 34 or 5 years. Well, we're here to watch footy. Kevin Sheedy, great to meet you. Great to have you here in Louisville. Let's watch some Division 2 football. Seattle and Great stuff, thanks, man. Much appreciated. Well, I have more from the USAFL Nationals. The year before was in Las Vegas, and I helped get the Calgary Kangaroos in the event. The year before that, I helped get the uh, Vancouver team in the Nationals in Milwaukee. Oh, that was a fun trip as well. But 06 in Las Vegas interviewed the legend, Hawks legend Robert Dippier Dominico. Dipper, they call him. Well, he tells a story how he was sitting around the pool and a few women thought he was Ron Jeremy. <laughs> it's funny. But the 89 VFL Grand Final, Hawks versus the Cats, one of the greatest Grand Finals of all time. And to you new people to AFL, the VFL was the strongest competition. The SANFL was number two. And then the AFL was formed. So the VFL Grand Final, the Hawks got up over the Cats. It's legendary. And I tell people to YouTube and see how rough and tough the game was back then. The Geelong Cats, similar jersey to this, the South Gawler Lions. And Dipper was in hospital. He tells the story how he got a punching lung and the priest, the priest was worried. The Catholic priest was worried. The full interview is on YouTube. Here is part of interviewing Robert Dipper, the legend. Standing here with Robert Dipper at Domenico. Dipper, well known, legend for Hawks. Five AFL Grand Final Premierships, four night Premierships, 80s, 90s. Of one of the best eras ever of Aussie Rules footy. Keep going. Dipper, first of all, tell us some about some of the great legends you play with. Johnny Platten, Gary Ayres, Well, Dunstall. actually, actually you made, well, thank you very much, though. Big rap. They actually played with me. I didn't actually play with them. But, <laughs> so, uh, of course, Lee Matthews is obviously my hero. And uh, Peter Hudson, back in the old days, when I first started playing, a guy called Peter Crimmins was our captain. Of I was only 17 at the time, and I... I walked in the club of 17 and I walked down on 34, but uh, Dunstall, Platten, Bacchanara, Mew, Langford, oh, just Rat, everyone, you know. And 89 grand final, one of the greatest grand finals ever. Gary Ablett was a legend, you boys won. Nine goals he kicked, nine, nine goals. goals he kicked. Unbelievable. Legendary story, he had crack, ri crack ribs, but the uh, punchy pun lung, punchy lung. Yeah, seriously, so, tell us about the punchy lung. Well, I really didn't know much about what was happening to me, but um, it's like our game, you, you've got to, there's sometimes you want, we can teach people about kick, mark and whatever, right. but when there's a ball up in the air, you know, you've got to use your courage and, and, uh, and they call it, the, you know, it's your ball, Dipper. <laughs> they sound and they found knew how it was coming, but look, it's one of those things that in a grand final, to get to a grand final, you work so hard, even though we did seven years in a row, which is a, a, a big feat for any football team, just to get there, it, it, all the things are going to go right. But when you're playing one, State of Origin, you name it, all those big games, you sure don't want to come off the ground, win, lose, or draw, you know, saying I played bad or I was injured, or whatever. But um, a bit of arrogance, but we survived the game, we survived life after that, man. We won by six points. So I've never seen the game ever on video or any of the grand finals I've played in. I do remember parts of it, and I've seen a little bit of the highlights of it, but never actually sat down and watched it. So how did you feel? Like you were half out of breath or you could hardly no, breathe? No, I, I was rooted, if I can say <laughs> that. I was absolutely knackered. Um, I was actually... Uh, uh, my voice was, was talking like this because I had all this air was escaping okay. from the lungs and whatever, but uh, I got to the hospital after it and spent nine days there. Uh, and, uh, oh my God, that's what I said when I saw the priest, because the priest was saying to me, you're not going to be here for a little while. And uh, he's telling me about the Lord and where I was going to. And, yeah. you know, was that close, eh? That was that close. Oh yeah. my God. And another big hit the same game was when Dermot got cleaned up and he kept yeah. going as well. Uh, well, I mean, when I saw Dermot go down the first second of the game, I thought, you weak bastard, get up. Right? <laughs> but then I realised exactly what had happened. And, uh, yeah, and, and, and about five minutes later, the ball came back. It, it backed into the pack, as we do in, in our game. 
He took this great mark right. and it really inspired the boys, you know. And that's what it's, you know, the, the game's about. Sometimes you've got to be a bit arrogant about the way you play, but you think, oh, this is my turn, this is my game, and there's nothing going to take me off this game, you know. And uh, you won a Brownlow medal. You no, tied well, with uh, Greg Williams. Greg Williams. Yeah, the dirtiest yeah. player ever to play league football or <laughs> AFL football. Uh, no, no. Are you him? No, him, him. Not me, not me. No, no, not me. I'm a lover. I'm not a pilot, you know? <laughs> no, but, uh, that was a highlight. Obviously, a big uh, highlight. Look, you when you're there, you don't realise what goes on. But now, 10, 12, 15 years down the track, it's awesome night, Brownlow night. Oh, of course. You're recognised with the people. And you and you get to meet the other Brownlows, and uh, it's just terrific, you know? It's a great honour to be part of a great game. And obviously, you still go each year to the Brownlow medal. That must be uh, a Yeah, I didn't go for a little while. I go now to see the girls. Oh, mate, <laughs> what about some of those women? What about some of the, what about some of the clothing they wear? Yeah. Girls, put something on. Actually, <laughs> girls, don't put anything on, you know? Now, talk, one of my all-time favourite players grew up next to him, Johnny Platten. Tell us about players. What a great rover, eh? Uh, what a man, like, uh, he's, he's, he's no bigger than you, uh, he's just got, you know, a lot of courage and just an awesome player, and it's just the way they win in half of the ball and, and the rat, we call him the rat, the, rat. the Brownlow Millers in 87, uh, superstar of the uh, of the Snaffle League there, yeah. the Sample League there, but uh, also superstar in AFL, but just a cheeky bugger. Yeah. Just a, Great guy. Eh? Yeah. I can't tell you why he's called the rat, but I think you've got an idea. And uh, what do you think? We're in Vegas, though. I mean, we're in Vegas. Aussie, Aussies have no idea that we even play football over here. What do you think of the US Nationals? You're a guest here. Yeah. Today's great standard. Obviously, what do you think of well, how we've, how it's grown overseas? Look, it has grown, and it's a game that we're trying to grow uh, all over the place. We're now playing in nearly uh, 24, 25 countries now, and uh, like in Europe, and of course, here in America, and. And just talking to the expats is terrific, but yeah. just talking to the newcomers, they just love yeah. the game, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and we love seeing them play, and today we saw this, uh, some of the games, <laughs> some guy got no one here, but <laughs> who cares, you know? And, uh, you know, got a guy called Tim Brasher, all Australian, filming right now, filming right now <laughs> all Australian playing our games, about yeah. time you wake up yourself, Timmy boy, you know? Mate, it's too easy. B.A. Brash, he, he loves our game, he's a legend, he's filming right now. Timmy Brash, a great rugby awesome. league player. I actually played rugby league with Tim. Did you? Yeah. I played in uh, two Wally Lewis uh, testimonial games. Oh, cool. And, yeah. uh, he's my teammate. And, and you know what? I got best on ground for us. I got that one out, you know? Bullshit. I did, I'm sorry to say. I got a, yeah, mo I got a mobile phone, didn't yeah, I? Come yeah, on. I got a mobile phone. But, I'm on a serious note, like Brash playing with us is a highlight for us. Oh, Brad Flower. Yeah. And, and the Canadian boys. Boys that start playing our game and the US boys that start playing our game. It's the best game in the world. It's Irish. unbelievable. And Dipper, it's Irish. great that you're here. <laughs> Robert Dipper here to Manigay. Legend Hawks, one of the greatest teams of all time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Day. It's yeah. a pleasure for me to meet this legend. Thanks a lot. No, man. thanks very much. Thank God bless you too. And uh, you. I'm now off now. Well, that was a lot of fun to meet and interview the legend Dipper. A lot of fun in Vegas. I played with the Calgary boys and then uh, partied also with the Vancouver guys because I played in 05 with the Burnaby Eagles. And shout out to Peter Taylor because I know he's listening to my audio-only podcast version of these shows. Now let's go back to 07 in Louisville, Kentucky, again at the U.S. Nationals, where I interviewed the Carlton legend Steve Silvani, eh? Well, unfortunately, there was some uh, speeches happened at the time, so I got some uh, screen captioning, so the uh, podcast version might be a bit hard to understand, but, you know, when you get to interview a guy like this that was in a hurry, you just got to go with it. So enjoy part of my interview with the legend, Stephen Silvani. One reason I really believe this guy got AFL full back of the century, the guys he had to stand. First of all, let's talk about some of these. Jason Dunstall. Yeah, well, he's a superstar. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the great players of all time. And a couple others, uh, Tony Lockett, Gary Abbott, <laughs> 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 
they uh, they certainly were uh, tough players. And and I felt the Bishop of Queensland and you were saying that all Australian advisory board with the tough player. With the Tony Fair. Uh, Cup O's, uh, Tony Modrum. Yeah, Modrum's uh, 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 interview him at the U.S. Nationals. Now let's go to my fourth AFL VFL player interview. It is the one and only NFL Aussie Darren Bennett. Oh, he was a very good AFL player VFL for the Melbourne Demons. And then he became a great NFL punter for the San Diego Chargers. I first met him in the Chargers room after the game against Seattle Seahawks in Seattle. And then I met him at the uh, Super Bowl 37 in San Diego at the Global Juniors. Then I met him again at Super Bowl 38. I got him a copy, one of my original copies of my movie, Football Fan Frenzy, that he said he really enjoyed. He's still involved in teaching punting in the USA. Let's go now to part of the interview with Darren Bennett in the Chargers locker rooms. Yeah, when we went to play Denver in the city this year. Darren Bennett, San Diego's Charger, ex-Melbourne <laughs> AFL legend, full forward. What was the most, you kicked like 70 or 80 a year, didn't you? What was your most for Melbourne? Uh, 90, 87. Okay. You kicked 87. Okay. That's good. I second to Johnny Longmire. Is that right? Because when I talk to people, I say, yeah, Darren was like... Oh, listen to you, you fucking <laughs> He's Australian. You're the foreign of yours. Hey, what's your name, man? Good evening, mate. How you going, all right? John Perella, <laughs> defensive line. How you doing? How you going, bud? Good to meet you, man. All right, man. He weighs uh, 600 pounds. Is he? Yeah, so they say like you were, the, you were like third or fourth best in the AFL, but you come second one year. That's yeah, you came second one year. Yeah, one year. Took me legs fell apart, and then I got a better job. <laughs> Better job for a guy with old legs anyway. Yeah, cool. So, so what's it like living in San Diego? You've got good weather down there, haven't you? Yeah, well, I'm from yeah. Perth originally, so... You're Perth for it? Yeah. yeah, all right, good to meet you, Darren. Yeah, good to meet you too, mate. Right? I was we'll, saying good day to everyone in Toronto for me. We played the Sky Dome there in 89, had a great time. Well, that was awesome to interview the legend NFL Aussie Darren Bennett. Well, I forgot to mention, this is another one of my jersey jumpers, Guernseys. It's the Ottawa Swans and my very last game of football. I played one game for the Swans. We went to Toronto. And I busted my shoulder, eh? So that was it. And then I started umpiring, refing, and uh, a lot of fun. Enjoyed it in Ottawa with the Ottawa Swans in the Ontario Australian Football League. Now let's go to some odds for the 2021 season. As I said, we talk bets, best bets, best picks, all sorts of stuff with Morenci on Sports Grid on Fridays. Well, the odds for the 2021 season are out. You can find them online. Tigers, the Richmond Tigers, the reigning back-to-back -back champions are at plus 300. All the coaches in a bit of trouble, but no, they'll be again strong this year. A lot of good young players coming through as well. So they unfortunately might be strong for a while, those black and yellow Richmond Tigers, led by the star, the tattooed man, Dustin Martin, is an absolute champ. Then we have the Geelong Cats at plus 550. Well, they've got Jeremy Cameron down there from GWS, a star forward. He had a bit of a rough year last year, but he'll be looking to come back and play well for the Geelong Cats. 
The champ, little Gary Ablett Jr. has retired, but again, the Cats should be strong, and I do think they will make the eight. I don't know about second favourite, though. Then we have third favourite. Equal third favourite is the West Coast Eagles, Gabe Renzi's longtime team, and one of my favourite cities in the world. They come from Perth, the West Coast Eagles. Uh, plus 750 along with the Brisbane Lions. Now, look at the Lions. I would put some money maybe on the Lions. They have recruited Joe Danaher, the very good forward, but has had a lot of injuries. They've got him out of the Essendon Bombers. So if Joe Danaher can stay fit, they're a big chance. They have Lockie Neal, the South Australian boy, and the current Brownlow medalist champ in the middle. That's the best and fairest player, the Brownlow medal, Lockie Neal. They're looking good, Brisbane Lions. Then at plus 800, we have the Port Adelaide Power Pap Smears. Oh, I tell you what. I would mind putting some money on the power pap smears. I hate to say that as a Crows fan, but they are looking good. They've got some good young players coming up. They lost the prelim final on a wet day night in Adelaide against the reigning champs, the Tigers, so they could have easily made it to the grand final. They've recruited Alaire Alaire from the Swans. Oh, they're looking good, the Port Adelaide Power Pap Smears at plus 800. Then we have the Western Bulldogs at plus 1100. They're on the up as well. They could make the top four because they have got Adam Trelaw. Controversy as he left Collingwood. They didn't want to pay him, but he's a very good player. Gets a lot of the football. So look for the Western Bulldogs to maybe be top four this season. Then we have the Magpies and Greater Western Sydney Giants at plus 1,400. We have the Saints at plus 1,800. The Saints are on the up. Demons at plus 2,200. The Blues at plus 3,000. The Hawks at plus 4,000. The Dockers at plus 5,000. You know what? I would take a bet if you can, maybe to put the Dockers making the final eight. They are on the up. Then we have the Suns at plus 6,000, the Bombers at plus 8,000, along with the Swans. My Crows at plus 10,000. You know, it annoyed me last year when the the skippers, the captain and vice captain, went to the coach and said, we don't understand your lingo. Too complicated, too technical bullshit going on. Too many coaches. They need to free up the game and get the, some better rules for higher scoring, and it proved it. When the Crows players couldn't understand what the coaches were saying, they worked it out and then they went on and won some games near the end of the season. Crows are in rebuild. And finally, the North Melbourne Kangaroos at plus 20,000. So there we go. Bit of a recap. Oh, like I said, it could be a Power Pap Smears Lions grand final. But again, the Tigers, Cats, Eagles, they'll be up there. The dogs are looking a good. Magpies might be on the down a little bit, along with GWS. Saints are on the up. The rest probably won't make the eight, but it depends on injuries. And let's hope COVID-19 doesn't affect the season too much, but they're very strict in Australia with lockdowns after small outbreaks. As you can see, now the Australian Open tennis, no crowds as Melbourne's in a five-day lockdown because of a small outbreak at the hotels. They can do it in Australia. They can control it, but sometimes might be a bit over the top. Just lock down the regions, not the whole cities, but hey, what would I know? So let's look forward to the AFL 20. 21 season starting on Thursday, March the 18th. Hope you've enjoyed my show and I look forward to being on Sports Rage, Sports Grid, Game Time Decision, Sirius XM Channel 204. Hope you can check out all my shows, mickozzy.tv, podcast version that's audio only. Search on Mick Ozzy on several of the podcasts versions including Castbox, Spotify and so forth. Hope you enjoyed my international sports and sports comedy show AFL Australian Rules Football Edition. <laughs>